Yo, what is up guys? Just want to make a real quick after pause video here. They did release the 1.8.0 update notes. It looks like it is dropping tonight in just a couple hours from the time you see this video. I'll try to get it up there as soon as possible. And if you're dedicated to this game, I'm sure you've seen this already. But in case you haven't, I just figured I'd share the knowledge and point it out for you guys. So let's just read through it here. Heads up soldiers, here are the patch notes for the 1.8.0 update. First off, we got the respawn screen. The respawn screen has been overhauled. The player's screen will now display additional info regarding the opponent's loadout. Also, players will now be able to see the number of times that they have died while battling a specific opponent as well as the number of times they have killed that particular opponent, a la a nemesis system. And so if we look at the picture here, hopefully you can see my cursor. Uh, we got our standard respawn in dot 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 countdown timer uh, i think it's what is it five seconds in training can't remember what it is in multiplayer i should probably know that um, then we see the name of the player you were killed by and then we also see this health bar and i didn't see that before i saw some leaked pictures of this update i'm not sure this health bar was in there but that's interesting if uh if your enemy's on the brink of dying i guess you could see that there and you know it might be a little interesting and then you get a quick little preview of the gear. You know, it doesn't even say what the gear is or anything. Obviously, there's limited screen real estate here. But, you know, if you're experienced in this game, you can tell what the gear is. That's the four-star Mastodon gear set. And you see the gadgets they had equipped and the weapon that they had equipped. So I wonder what will happen if they get a kill with the gadget. Will the gadget show up here or will it still be the weapon? Like... Will you not be able to tell if you get killed with a gadget or a weapon? That'll be pretty interesting. And then this little thing down here, we got the Nemesis system. And so basically in this example, the player is S-I-N-O-N. -N. I don't know if that spells something in another language or anything. Sinon. Um, and then he's going versus Crasher. And you see Crasher killed you. And so... Clearly, Crasher is up 1-0, to zero, and so that'll give you a scoreboard as the match progresses. I think that's pretty cool. You know, nothing major going on here. Obviously, they're trying to sell more gear, ultimately. You know, if you see the gear that somebody killed you with, and they keep killing you. You know, if you're like 0-25 against someone, and they're wearing like 6-star Skull Trickster gear, you know, and it pops up every time, you're like, oh man, I gotta buy that gear. Oh man, I want that gear. You know, so ultimately, I think... It could be a, a business decision in that sense. Um, but from a player's perspective, I know a lot of you guys aren't that excited about it, but I think it's cool. I think it's a good switch up, you know, just a little more info. Um, and this little nemesis system should make it a little more competitive. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. Not a huge change, but I think it's positive. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Then we'll keep going on. We'll try to make this video quick. Try not to ramble on too much. We got custom match creation. The custom match screen has been adjusted with the sole purpose of improving user convenience. That is always good to hear, man. Uh, so let's see what they did. Due to the size of the buttons and button placement, the devs felt menu maneuverability was counterintuitive. I kind of agree with that. Players are now able to create custom matches with ease using the tap and scroll function on a much cleaner interface. And so it does look a bit cleaner. Um, you know, it's never going to be perfect, right? Uh, but it, it, it looks pretty good. You see one thing to point out is the background image. I know a lot of you guys probably saw that already in some leaked pictures, but it looks like the new background image is indeed happening. And this guy's got a lot of cash and gold saved up. He should spend some of that. But <laughs> looks like you can swipe through the maps up here, put a match name here, password here, um, swipe through the players here. Obviously a lot better than it used to be. And this looks to be the resolution or whatever screen size of an iPhone. Um, and I'm assuming it looks similar on an iPad. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, it looks, it looks, you know, definitely like an improvement. So I think that's a positive. Once again, there's other features that we as players want more than this. But this is a step in the right direction. And it's definitely appreciated, in my opinion. Once again, leave your feedback in the comments below. I'd love to read it. Uh, then, moving on, we got respawn protection in training. We have had 
we have all had our fair share, not fair share, can't even read. We have all had our share of unfair respawn death moments while training. A random instant death caused by incoming fire from your six. Oh man. If you go to my channel, like the second or third video I ever posted, get ready for some real cringe if you watch my beginning videos. Um, if you think I'm cringy now, just go back and watch those. Uh, but like one of my first videos, I think it was the second one, I posted a video of loading into a training match and Ward kills us right off the bat. And this just made me think of that. It's not, you know, it doesn't really cover that situation. This is after respawning. Um, but it just made me think of that. So if you want to go watch a funny, you know, 20, 30 second video, go check that out. Just go to my channel, sort videos old to new, and it'll pop up at the top. But that's a pretty good one. Just made me think of that. Um, and so along with the many features, this update will also introduce a more fine-tuned enemy spawn system. Enemies will no longer spawn right behind you, but instead at a farther distance. So that's a little interesting. That might bring back training in train yard. We'll have to give all the maps a try, give them a fair chance in training, see if we can farm on maps other than close quarters camp and warehouse. Um, I don't really like close quarters, but I know a lot of you guys out there do. I only use warehouse as I know a lot of you guys do as well, but it's really just between those two. Hopefully that opens up train yard again and maybe some other options, but we'll see. Um, so once again, not a huge change, but it's something in a positive direction. Um, and now the, I think this is one of the biggest one, the new favorites system. Introducing the new favorite system, players will now be able to favorite prized weapons and gear. Favoriting these items, this is what I was speculating on, causes them to become locked, preventing them from being sold or used as material in the future. In addition, favorited items are placed in the favorites section of the inventory, making it easier to locate and equip them on the fly. So this is kind of leading towards loadouts. You know, it's you could easily favorite, you know, six gear pieces. That's two loadouts. Favorite a couple weapons for those different gear pieces. And you could easily switch between two gear sets in between matches. So... No, they didn't implement loadouts, pre-selected loadouts like we would all love to see. But this kind of accomplishes that task. And um, really important not to be overlooked, this prevents them from being sold or used as material in the future. And so, you know, if any of you guys use, what is that, switch control? Or if you like jailbreak and use auto touch or something, I don't know. I don't know all this iOS stuff, but... Um, if you have something favorited, you won't accidentally burn your weapons anymore. Uh, I guess that's been the case. I've never actually used switch control or auto touch or whatever to do any of my after pulse stuff, but, um, you know, that should be a good positive change for anyone who does. And just for the average normal player who doesn't mess around with any stuff like that, you know, it's still an amazing change, you know, you won't accidentally sell gear that you really want to hold on to you won't accidentally burn weapons that you really want to hold on to and you can easily switch between them so um the only issue i have with this is that players with a huge inventory and i'm just thinking of, of this off the top of my head players with a huge inventory are going to be favoriting a lot of items because they want to prevent them from being sold or used as material in the future and so that's going to kind of defeat the purpose of the favorites section of the inventory. Because um, there's just going to be so many favorites that it's not even going to like, you know, it still helps a little bit. But I don't know. I think that might be a slight oversight on the devs part. That's a little disappointing. I just thought of that as I was recording this. But um, either way, it's still a positive change. Still want to look at this very positively. It is a step in the right direction. Hopefully you guys can appreciate it. Um, and as I said with the last two features, let me know what you think on this feature in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Love to read your guys' feedback. And so we got a couple other things here. Looks like we're at the bottom now. So shop overhaul. Welcome to the freshly overhauled game shop under new management. That's funny. Uh, the shop, the shop still contains old favorites. It's too late to read. Uh, such as deals and gadgets while displaying a new modern look. Gadgets, packages, and deals are more organized this time around. New features include themed shops and seasonal oriented sections that contain specialized weapons and gear. 
shop sections. There is a bank section, the one-stop shop for cash and gold. Smuggler's Corner, a little new spot here. A good place to find a smuggler or a businessman willing to sell some weapons. The Rebels Depot, another interesting one. A perfect underground depot to obtain best-in-class gear. Very, very interesting. Leaves us on a cliffhanger. Hopefully, you know, there's a lot running through my mind. Hopefully, it's as good as I'm seeing the possibility of it being. Um, that could really be something awesome. We'll just have to wait to see until the update actually drops and we update and see it for ourselves. But I cannot wait to see what that is. Hopefully, I'm not disappointed too much. You know, I wouldn't get your hopes up too high, but... That could be something to really think about, you know, it, it could really change the dynamic of acquiring weapons and gear, so we will see, man. I am definitely looking forward to see what seeing what that's all about. We can only speculate right now. And then, lastly, finally, we have a couple bug fixes mentioned. Hopefully they addressed more than this, but even if this is all they addressed, you know, I know a lot of you guys have vocalized that you want more issues addressed, and... You know, while I certainly agree, I'm just trying to focus on the positive, and this is in a positive direction. And so, you know, I know there's still some major issues out there, disconnects, gear perks, blah, blah, blah. Um, but let's see what they listed here. Several crash and disconnect issues addressed. That's very vague. We'll see if people disconnect less often or whatever. Um, In-game controls do not become disrupted by iOS system pop-ups. This is huge for me personally and probably a lot of you out there as well. I know in several training matches that I've been doing, even in multiplayer, if you get like a low battery warning pop-up while you're shooting, once you dismiss that warning, you just keep shooting, and like you can't even aim. You can move, but you can't aim. Um, and you just have to wait to die and respawn. So that's really awesome to see fixed. Hopefully it's actually fixed, like they say. Uh, but that's definitely a positive. Weapons shooting delay issues fixed. And so this could be really huge. I know a lot of you guys are complaining about like weapons kind of stuttering and the fire button not responding right away. I've complained about it myself as well in several videos. And maybe I posted about it here and there. Um, but I know I definitely mentioned it in a couple of videos. Uh, so that'll be huge. Hopefully that is indeed fixed. And weapons aren't like sputtering like a lot of you guys have reported. And you know, the fire button is as responsive as it should be, which is, you know, extremely responsive. Um, <laughs> so that's a good change. Then we got two more. Enemies cannot shoot through walls. Um, that's a little concerning regarding multiplayer. Could enemies shoot through walls before? Um, I mean, I know the BRW could when it was first introduced, but that was fixed. Um, but I'm assuming this leads more towards training. Um, which I have posted videos on that in the past of like Hauser shooting through barriers and um, I think I've ran into it in some other cases just like bots and custom matches shooting through barriers whatever um, so that's that's good you know it's not it's not as huge of an issue now that they gave Hauser a Mar 12 I mean he's still a strong bot still a, a good contender he can still give you a run for your money he obviously kills you a lot in training um, but it doesn't seem to be as much of an issue of him shooting through walls as it used to be. But that's still a positive change in a good direction. And going back to the possibility of opening up training on Train Yard again, depending on these new spawn changes in training, um, that'll be huge because shooting that one farming spot in Train Yard, which I'll show in upcoming videos, we'll test it out. Um, Hauser was, that's where he originally got famous for shooting through walls, shooting through containers, whatever you want to call them. Um, so we'll see what's going on with that. But that is a good change. You know, nothing crazy, but a good change. And then lastly, we have inactivity timer issue addressed. Extremely vague. I don't even know what that means. Um, I think one of the recent updates, they increased the inactivity timer from 20 seconds to 25 seconds or something like that. Or maybe something different. I know they increased it to something. Um, I did not know that there was an issue with it, but whatever. I guess that's good to see fixed. And so, you know, that's it. That's all they provided us. Um, I think just kind of going over my thoughts here as I'm reading this for the first time. Um, I think 
1.8 is a little overhyped. I think with how long we waited as players, I think we were expecting a bit more. Um, I know several people will quit the game, will absolutely quit the game, just because we did not get a new map in this update. We really want new maps as players. We really, really do. And the other thing is that we really, really want team selection and custom matches. Let's go back to this um, just to make sure. Yeah, I don't see any team selection, although that would be more once you create the match anyway. But um, there's no mention of it. And, you know, I know for a fact if the developer... If the developers have, you know, 20 minutes to listen to this little rant on these update notes, um, you will get many players back in the game if you just implement team selection into custom matches. So please do that. Um, overall, you know, these, these changes are all in a positive direction. Um, I know a lot of players are, you know, spewing some charged comments, but at the end of the day, I mean, I... I encourage you all to take a step back and, you know, see it for what it is. Maybe I'm the blind one. Maybe I'm not seeing it for what it is. Uh, but overall, I see this as very positive. I think it's a step in the right direction. I think it's a good update. I think it's a little overhyped. Uh, but that hype could be met depending on what these Smugglers Corner and Rebels Depot really do for us. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing those. This Favorites feature is going to be great and we'll test out some new training spots possibly and so yeah i think i covered all i want to cover really nothing planned for this video just kind of rambling on showing you guys update notes in case you don't know it should be out in a couple hours from when you're seeing this video um maybe like four or five hours i don't know uh might be a little different based on your region i don't know how the app distribution goes through the app store and all that um but yeah, man, I think it's a, I think it's some changes in the right direction, a little overhyped, but nonetheless, good changes, and ultimately, we will see when we download it for ourselves and start playing. So hopefully, you guys will join me in After Paul's continuing our, what is it, two-year journey, something like that, almost two full years now in After Paul's. Uh, so hopefully you guys will continue the journey with me. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. I still love this game, man. And these are changes in the right direction. We can only hope that they keep going in this direction in the future. And, you know, hopefully some more frequent updates, possibly. That would be nice as well. Uh, but yeah, I think that covers it uh, all over the place with this one. Just really wanted to get this out there for you guys. So hopefully you appreciate it. Hopefully, you know, sparks some debates, some comments. Uh, I'd really love to hear your guys' opinions, so let me know in the comments below. And can't wait to see you out there in version 1.8 of After Pulse. I'll catch you on the next video.